Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This, That, or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. Hi, this is Dan Jurgens, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a flying Moloch. Oh, not many more of you can on the screen today. All right, kids, welcome back to another episode of Electric Moloch, the Superman podcast. Your, your journey from everything burn onward to the horizon. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, it is the wait. A What's that say? Silver Banshee Fan Club Vice Director. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Yell swooping back into Metropolis and getting ready to scream some faces off. And Tyler may uh, be able to join us here in a little bit. So, yeah, he had some. He had some uh, scaling Mount Malware to do. Yes. So hopefully he doesn't have any malignancies waiting on his iPad. Uh, hopefully, hopefully his hopefully his tablet doesn't uh, develop any uh, warts or anything. You know. <laughs> All right. Uh... <laughs> any discharge? Oh, hey. <laughs> That's still getting me. Silver Banshee fan fan club vice director. That's, <laughs> That's a mouthful. Uh, oh. so, yeah, we're back. It's I mean, it's been a little bit since you know, like last week we did an um, action and a booster gold. This time we're doing one of each of the books at the time. Yeah. Yes. Superman one of all three. Superman 12, Adventures of Superman 435, and Action Comics 595. I'm trying to remember. I think the last time we did it at Adventures, I, 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 was, I think I said that might have been uh, that might have been Wolfman's last, but this might be Wolfman's last this week. It feels it kind of feels like it has a lot yeah. of finality to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we tied something up very quickly. Yes, very quickly. All right, so should we jump in? Yes. Uh, here, let me open the iPad. Okay, well, I'm opening the iPad here. Did you see, I guess, you know, I don't know if you ever watched Superman and Lois on the CW. No. But no. this upcoming season is going to be the last season, season four. Okay. Yeah. And I guess, I don't know, I, I saw something. I don't I guess this is true, but I saw it online the other day. And it's, they said, yeah, they're ending it now because they don't want it to compete with the Superman legacy movie from James Gunn. And oh, I'm just like, no. you're really worried. I mean, that's that, the reason for doing it. You're worried about your big budget movie competing with a CW, a show. I mean, no offense, CW, but I mean, their budget's not the hugest. So, yeah, it's, no, yeah, there's a light night and day difference between the two of those things. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. I hope they don't mess this up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's it's not looking very good. Come on, DC. I don't want to be ashamed next time there's a DC movie out, and I don't want to be ashamed to say I'm a DC fan. <laughs> yeah, or I remember the good old days of Wonder Woman 1984. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Let's not ever get there to that point. No. I did want to show you a couple of Superman books that I just got with my big oh, okay. book order in the mail. I got the hardcover Superman oh. Camelot Falls, the deluxe edition. Kurt Busiek, yes. Yes. And the late Carlos Pacheco, unfortunately, we just lost oh, yeah. not too long ago. Yeah. I do remember that run. That's a good run. Yeah. And this one, I love this so much. Tales of the Super Pets. T-A-I-L-S. <laughs> <laughs> Streaky the Super Cat, Crypto the Super Dog. We got Ace the Bat Hound. Yeah. Everybody's in this one. Hey, that's like we, so we get an incredible simulation of Crypto and Streaky this week. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that made me really happy. I was like, oh, look, they're all there. Even the horse. 
That's so funny though. It's like yeah we're not going to mention anything crazy but we'll tease stuff every so often yeah we'll just throw some tidbits in here and there i like that all right uh should we jump in uh i uh, superman 12 first is that fine with you that's sure yeah awesome do, I, like first. I mean <clears throat> the cover's not bad but that cover <laughs> oh, that cover is a little weird to me <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> it's a little strange yeah all right, you're oh, you're gonna love this synopsis. All right, uh, Superman volume two, number 12 from December 1987, Lost Love, and of course, writer and penciler John Byrne, inker yeah. Carl Kessel, colors Tom Zayuko, letter of John Costanza, 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 <laughs> and editor Mike Harlan. All right. How do you sum up this issue? Um, well, I can do it in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words, kids. Seven words, okay. Superman remembers his old lover, Lori Lamaris. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes it sound, right. sound kind of naughty. It does. Is How is he remembering her? In, in the dark by himself? Oh, that's naughty. <laughs> well, what are the circumstances of this remembrance? Oh, okay. Here's an, here's an ironic one. There's nothing to get wet about anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and with this one, you definitely can't say superior puss. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Why can't you say that, kids? Because there's something <clears throat> fishy going on. <laughs> there's a part with some ten <laughs> There's a part with some tentacles, though. Oh, oh yes, yes. Uh, uh, oh, were they tentacles? I don't think those are tentacles. <laughs> All right. The All octopus right. really liked Lori. Let's put it that way. All right. Let's get into this. Yes, we see Superman meeting someone, uh, Ronald, on the uh, rugged Atlant Atlantic coastline north of Metropolis. Hmm. Yeah. And we don't see him from the waist down at all. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Because, uh, not yet, anyway. Yeah. yeah they meet about, uh, yeah, Superman talking about, it. I love Lori, and you, you took her away from me, and then uh, yeah. then talking about her death, and uh, they're, he's preparing a special memorial, so I want yeah. Superman to uh, relate his story of his time with Lori, so flashback. Flashback, wavy lines, wavy lines, wavy lines. And uh, look, he's almost got a, uh, almost a mullet. I know, he's yeah. He's got a proto mullet here. And what is this, 1987? Yes, the, I mean, yeah, this issue, yeah. Yeah, so this is prime mullet era. So, yes, he flashes back to when he was in a, a student at Metropolis University. Mm. Or University of Metropolis, yes. Yeah. And he sees us. So, so many years ago, yeah. Yes. He sees a young woman in an out of control wheelchair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he melts her tires. Yeah. You know, why not? Catches her. She needed new tires anyway. Uh, the, other, the other ones were getting shoddy. I looked into eyes as deep and mysterious as the sea. <laughs> mm. Yep. And for the first time in my life, I fell in love. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Sorry, Lana. Wow. Yeah. Lana's like, gee, thanks, Clark. Uh -huh. So... They introduce themselves, and Lori's like, "Oh, it's like, oh, what happened to my tires?" And Clark's like, "Oh, well, what kind of excuse can I come up with?" And she kind of gives him an excuse, like, "Oh, it must have been the friction." Hmm. Yeah. And so it's like, hope we see each other again. And then, uh, like a week later, they're both on a uh, field trip to the Ark, the Flirt yes. Aquarium in Metropolis River. Has a bunch of fish on board this giant ship, but then of course there's a catastrophe. Oh yes, an out of control tugboat. Yes, it hits yeah. the side and the thing starts 
sinking. So Clark gets Lori to safety, and she's like, no, 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 I'll be all right. And he's like, uh, brave handicap girl. Uh. <laughs> but she's like, save the fish, because oh. the polluted river water will kill them. Which I, I liked that. I was like, oh, I liked the fact that they, <clears throat> they didn't just abandon the fish to die on the boat. That was Yes. Great. Yes, we've, we've seen a, too much animal cruelty in comics lately. Uh, that's <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Wolverine. <laughs> I swear there was something else, too, but yeah. yeah. Oh, Rom. Yeah, remember the dog got shot? Oh, Rom. The, yeah, the dog got shot by Rom by the ricocheted bullets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, seen the enough ex- dog death lately. Yeah. Clark dives in the river and separates the tongue in the boat thing. as the tongue, like, <laughs> the, the engine room blows up. He's like, oh, I don't think it was the explosion that separated <laughs> Yeah, of course. Then he sees Lori dive in the river and then get grabbed by a good giant octopus from the Ark. Yep. Oh, see, now we can say it. Yes, this giant octopus. Uh, yeah. your puss. <laughs> that octopus really liked her. Mm. Well, he's Hanging like, on. So, okay, this is the part I don't get because he's like, Clark's like, wait a minute, is she talking to it? Its lips are moving. I'm like, isn't she telepathic? Why would she have to move her lips? Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just like, okay. Yeah. I mean, That's like, weird. Again, I guess so. Clark suspects something, but I'm just like, yeah. Is she telepathic? Yeah. Maybe it's the whole like mermaid thing that she's oh. singing the song of the mermaids or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Uh-huh. She's so dumb. She moves her lips when she's speaking telepathic. So yeah, the, the, the octopus swims away, and Clark grabs Lori and says, "What happened? Yeah. That monster had grabbed you." And she says, "They're actually very timid." Yeah, but here, here's for me where the mystery was completely r- ruined because you never once see her legs. Like that blanket would have definitely come off when she d- oh, in yeah. the water. There's no yeah. way that blanket would have still, been, still been draped around her legs. Well, like when he's at least carrying her out of the river too. I'm like, I'm like mm-hmm. your arms under what should be her legs. I'm like, you can't tell that you it, that doesn't feel, even through the blanket. That's not going to feel a little funny where it's like, oh no, right. that's one tail, it, not like two it, legs. <laughs> yeah. The, there's a significant weight difference between the two things, I would imagine. Uh, yeah. and it, but again, I mean, we're in the universe where, yeah, he disguises himself with a pair of glasses. But oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We both have our secrets. She says, "Promise me that you will respect mine. Promise me you will never try to see my legs." Oh yeah, that's 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 a foundation for a great relationship. <laughs> mm, yeah, cool. Uh, so yeah, I guess they they basically start dating. <laughs> yep. Uh, then all of a sudden one night he's like, she's like, uh, uh well she says I got to get back to my trailer on time. He's like, every time, every night she has to get home by eleven o'clock. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What are you going to turn into a pumpkin? Uh, and then one day, yeah, he he proposes and she he says, first I have to tell you a secret, and she says i know all about your uh great powers mm-hmm. he's like how did you know when did i get myself away and she's like you did not uh you shared your greatest secret but i can't i know it must seem cruel but i'm not being cruel uh it's part of the reason i was sent to america and part of why i can't why i can love you with all my heart but never marry you mm. so then he's all he's all about why why is it your legs off i can search the whole world for <laughs> Instead, his logical deduction: it's another man. <laughs> oh yeah, because yeah, he spies on her that night with his attic. Yeah, he gets all stalkery and starts following her to her trailer and using his X-ray vision to spy on her. I was like, "What are you doing, Clark?" Yay. So I love how I love his X-ray vision can see through the side of the trailer, but he's still not seeing through not that. through yeah. the blanket. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless unless she, unless she thought it is mine, she's like, "Oh yeah, he can't see through lead. I better wrap some lead around this." Oh thing. yeah, lead lead blanket. There we go. <laughs> they had a lot of those hanging around in Atlanta, I guess. Yeah. Hello, Russell. How's your lips? Whoa. And you never want to see her legs. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hello, hello, 
Bullet fan, uh, Russell. Howdy, <laughs> y'all! <laughs> Russell would have gotten the biggest kick out of this issue. I can picture him reading this and just laughing. Oh, hello, Noel. Space Jesus. Yes, we are talking. About <laughs> we're talking about, <laughs> I we're, know. We're talking about his time with the mermaid. Space yeah. Superman 12, Space and, Jesus and the mermaid. And wasn't this, I was trying to think, wasn't this around the time when that movie Mermaids came out? Wasn't there that movie Mermaids right around this time? Was it? Um, it's got to be one of them because wasn't was it Splash who was with the mermaid? Oh, that yeah, with Daryl Hannah. This is what I was thinking. It's got to be one of them. Splash, yeah, you would think. That one. But again, Lori was like a Silver Age character too. So I mean, oh, yeah. Wow. We, the... No, soups like that. <laughs> <English lady. laughs> that's right. That's right, Noel. Right in the gill. <laughs> 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 Cryptonic. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> if this aquarium's a rockin', don't come a knockin'. Ah, that Lori, what a broad, George. She's such a catch. <laughs> Between the gills. <laughs> Look at the gills on that broad. <laughs> uh, no Finest piece of tail he ever had. <laughs> oh. Uh. Uh. Flash was 1983, so it wasn't that. Oh, okay. So, what well, was it? Mermaids, maybe. Mermaids. But like I said, Lori, Lori was a uh, Silver Age character, so. Yeah, but she hadn't been talked about in a while, had she? She I died during think... Crisis. I mean, this was her first post-crisis post, post -crisis appearance. But... Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, was it? Oh, wait, here we go. Merm oh, 1990. Oh, 90? Oh, my so, word. This kind of took place between the two, yeah. Ooh. God. <laughs> I must have tried to delegate that to further back in history. Oh, Lord. No. Even fish ladies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that where he went? Okay. <laughs> Russell, he was looking for the life <laughs> was hiding in there. Oh, geez. what the trailer or the gills? I don't know. <laughs> I swear, one day we're just gonna do an episode, we'll get Lil Finn on this, and we're just like, we're gonna throw a topic and see how many, so many lines these guys can throw out. Just be, yes, I we love that. On tonight, and we're like, mermaids, go <laughs> mermaids. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, Russell, very tone, old terms of evil. Call yes. Uh, oh, Lord, no. Even aliens like a <laughs> like taco. A <laughs> taco. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well. These can blame the smell on something. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Yeah, so, so Clark sees Lori, <coughs> Lori on some radio and he's like, oh, she's a spy. Oh, she's a commie. Once again, kids, x-ray vision seeing through the side of her trailer, but still not through that yeah. blanket. So, yeah. So later on, when she's out of the trailer, well, we, first he ch checks her files at the university. She's in the history, archaeology, marine bi marine biology, class mm. classical mythology. Yeah. Uh, taking up the dirt on her. Then we yeah. checks her trailer. Yeah, the bed is not a bed. It's a uh, yeah. China How cool game. is that? He he goes into her place, starts <laughs> looking around. Super stalker, <laughs> scoping out her bed. <laughs> Super I stalker as only burn. <laughs> <threatened. laughs> burn. Oh, Lord Russell, caviar. Oh, <laughs> little <laughs> Superman caviar. 
Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I ever, I never ask you for nothing. But can one day, can you send me a drop that says those gills scare me? <laughs> those boobs scare me. <laughs> or right between the gills. <laughs> that'll do too. I'll just say eventually Laura will be back. So yes, well, that'll come at the end one day. Uh, so yes, instead of a bed, she has a giant like fish tank, and then he's like, "Wait a minute, this is crazy." <laughs> the flying alien says, "Hmm, what I'm thinking is crazy, but yeah, yeah. I you. yes, I know what she is." Maybe I should actually use my X-ray vision to look under that blanket now. Yes, so he finds her trying, literally trying to crawl back into the sea. Yeah, she's crawling to the to the ocean. Yeah, then he grabs her and then, yes, uh, takes her to. Uh, Atlant well, where what to Atlantis? Well, over the yeah, in the ocean yeah. over it. Yeah. So she jumps in the water and strips down. Yeah. Surprise! She's a mermaid. <laughs> Again, here the minute that yeah he sees her in the ocean you know, for the first time, she's like it, he's like it was Lori's voice, but speaking inside my mind, she was a natural telepath. Then why was she moving her lips with the octopus? Yeah, some natural telepath. Oh boy! Oh boy! Uh, no, just no, just hit no, just hit the magic word. Uh, yes, I believe he didn't. Uh, no, Did, didn't Frank Miller bring the fish lady back in his weird Superman book? Your mother's a whore. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, uh, and she will make she makes a your return in the nineties here, so so. Because astonishingly, for the first time, when a character is believed to be dead, they're not. Imagine that. I know. Imagine that. What a so, concept. yeah, she, she gives them the whole uh, history of Atlantis, how it used to be above the sea, and then the great cataclysm 45,000 years ago that sunk it, and then how her ancestors uh, developed the ability to breathe underwater. But the serum made them fish people. That's right. And then yeah, they had on and off contact with the surface world, mm. and then they yeah, some of them went off to uh, start new communities. Some of these colonies lost contact with it, touch with Atlantis. She said that's why she came to America. Her family, her mother, father, younger sister, are all that remain of one such lost colony. Mm. Mm. But yeah, she tells him, yes, uh, that's why we can't be together. You belong on the surface world, and we must say, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, but had, had to say it, uh-huh. Superman really. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the thing he did. <laughs> no, I think, he, I, think he, I think he's depressed because he didn't. <laughs> that's one notch on the vid post. He can't actually. No, no. Damn scurvy! <laughs> see, see, you're you see, you were gonna write a story, Justin, about uh, him and that brought on apocalypse. I mean, write yeah. this story. <laughs> a million little Superman caviar. A, a Kryptonian with a tail with no legs. Yeah, come on. <laughs> So yes, we see yes, he, him and Lori uh, separated at that point, and then he's like, "I must put her out of my mind for several years." But then I saw that haughty Aquaman, and I, just... mm, you know, that blonde biscuit will do it for you. Oh my! <laughs> Don't let Namor hear you saying that, Justin. Jeez. My oh, favorite well. biscuit. <laughs> see, that's that's the only thing that's missing is if Namor blonde. had blonde hair, that'd be the whole package. Uh, and then yes, he. Clark learns the uh, the hidden location of Atlantis years mm. later. Years later. Yeah. Hans Schmidt. Hans this Schmidt. Old, Hans Schmidt, this old nasty dude. Is... I am. Uh, Hans Schmidt. Sounds like he's, he should have been dropped out of Nakatomi Plaza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, telling Clark about all the, you know, these sightings of a uh, of a mermaid. She's too beautiful to be yeah. human and not mean to have her. Alive or dead. Alive or dead. So yeah, they reunite just in time to... Uh... For her to get a knife in the back from this dude. Yep. 
I said I'd have the sea witch. Her corpse will be worth thousands to a circus sideshow. Oh, God. All right. And Clark just loses it. And he's like, if she dies, there'll be no corner of the universe where you can hide from me. Dude's like, you're mad. <laughs> I'm like, why didn't she have to kill her? Couldn't he have taken her alive? Get her on the yeah. sea. Get her on the sea. She really can't run away. Yeah, exactly. Get her on land. You could have made a lot more money off of her alive. Let's put it that way. If that was his goal to get thousands of dollars. Yeah. Stupid. That's the guy who looks like he'd bang a fish. <laughs> on Schmidt. Yeah. He looks like Seamus from uh, Family Guy before he got his arms and legs chewed off by the sharks. Well, it looks like Popeye if he had a rough couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Popeye if he turned to meth instead of spinach. <laughs> oh, I'm sitting instead of spinach, it's meth. <laughs> uh, I hope Lee no. What's the rest of the name? Noel Tate. Oh, the huge manatee. <laughs> oh, get it, kids? Instead of, oh, the humanity? Oh, jeez. What is that haunt? <laughs> well, blow me up. <laughs> you kids aren't allowed to play here anymore. Jeez. They're naughty. I love yes. it. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That that whole uh, that whole chat room over there. Yes, it, all I can say is, "Oh, that's naughty." <laughs> uh, but Superman mm -hmm. takes Lori to uh, Atlanta or Tri Tritonus. Uh, Tritonus, yeah, this is the colony. Yes, and where she's saved by a young doctor, Ro Ronald. But then, yes. Yeah. But then, oh, we can. But then Superman's like, oh, no, now we can get married. And she, then she's like, no, she's falling in love with Ronald. And she's like, no, 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 our love was never meant to be. Uh, mm. You thought you felt love, but it was more like pity and stuff. And she's saying, you know, my life's down here. And uh, I see in your mind you found someone too, a human woman named Lois Lane. Lois, ooh, who's, you've got the things for Lois. Who's like, who's like nasty to you half the time? <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's like Clark and Lois up in a tree. Oh, Russell. Oh, my God. You're welcome, but you're not welcome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello, Tyler. Hello, guys. Hey, Tyler. Oh, finally, I, some sanity. Yes. Yeah, so I we're, had to we're, jump in here. I missed you guys. Um, we're still on the first issue. We're still talking. The, you're uh, fine. Okay. I'm behind on the books because I cannot get issues, things to work right. But I just missed you guys. So I just wanted to join in and just listen. And be here. Oh, okay. We're talking about the Lori Lamar issue. Right? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> the mermaid. Yeah. That's one of those like I feel that they're just like, hey, I got an idea. What if what if uh you know Superman was with Aquaman's sister? Like, you know what? Let's just make another character. Let's have Aquaman's <laughs> when sister. they were when they were kids. Yeah. We'll just call her Lori and we'll make we'll make <laughs> let's get this. Let's just put it as another double L for fun. Yeah. Oh yes. Well, let's just see. Let's yeah. see how many double L's we can get into Superman's existence. Right, Lori well, Lamar is yeah, I mean, Lang, Lois Lane. Lo yeah, especially I mean, when you get to all the Luthers, where it's just L -L -L. yeah, yeah. And again, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is her first post-crisis appearance, but yeah, back in the day, she was just, you know, she was a she was a Silver Age character. So yeah, they were just like, hmm, what, hmm. Yeah. he's an alien. He's been with humans. He's been with probably, you know. Alternate dimensions, aliens. I know a mermaid. <laughs> mermaid, yeah. We'll be I mean, the one for the bedpost. Those those drugs in the sixties and seventies must have been really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they took the acid tab right to the eyeball. <laughs> Everyone loves cocaine. I mean, right. yeah. Well, we almost got to the end where yeah, she's saved by her doctor and she falls in love with the doctor and she's like, fall in love and yeah, you're with yeah. Lois Lane, so. Yeah, that's, yep. that's when we get to the end of the story, and and then there's that little teaser at the end with for Millennium. Ooh. Oh yeah, we're gonna do that next next episode, gents. At least a Superman issue. Yeah, Mon Pa Kenter tranquilized by a mysterious figure at the end. Oh. Yes, when they go, yes when they go over to Lana's house. Hmm. Mm. Well, why? 
if you if you listen to previous episodes, you know who the Manhunter agent is in Smallville. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So, yeah. Did you get a chance to read this, Tyler, or no? No. Uh, I I had issues. Want to say that? I mean, most of it. Most of it's a flashback to Clark meeting Lorian when he was at Metropolis U. Yeah. I uh, I tried to uh, get going. Like I tell, like I, I said, like my one year renewal came up for my birthday for my Ultra, but then uh, I had to buy new uh, tires for Jania. And with her car, you have to buy all four at the same time. So I had to do that. That was an unexpected bill. And then uh, had to take my dog to the vet uh, to have some surgery. So that was unexpected. And uh, so there wasn't a lot of leftover money for Tyler to renew his ultra at this, this pay period. So, so how did. dare you put the safety of your wife and your family pet over this podcast? You get paid nothing for it. I know. I thought about it. I was like, I told Janine, I was like, oh, man. I was like, man, uh, Phil's going to be upset. She's like, what? I'm like, I can't do the reading. I'm like, don't have my app. Because, like, most all my comic stuff now comes from doing the app. I'm like, he's going to be all. She's like, Is, can we go to the comic book store? I said, no. I like, these are all old. I'm like, we would be there forever trying to find these books. I was like. I was oh, like, look at collections of all this stuff now. Yeah, but I ended up spending almost as much as just buying the damn app. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. That, uh, yeah, that we started my other pet peeve. It's like when you go and search for, for back issues and like they don't have them in any kind of order. Nope. Just there, there's a box over there. Not even alphabetical. Just mm. there's and, and another thing is, can I just say like it's frustrating that they don't have a like you can't do ultra monthly. Like you can't pay like an uh oh yeah, yeah. Like it's either I totally forgot it's like oh I'll just switch to monthly. They have regular monthly, but it's only like I don't know what all books it has, and I'm like, I don't really want to do that and not get what I need out of it. I was gonna say, what do you get with Ultra? Because I think I'm on the regular. I mean, I, I do the yearly. Yeah, I'm on the regular. Because yeah. Ultra is you get the books 30 days after they release, and then yeah. they have certain books that come out the same day, and they drop on Ultra the same day. Oh, and they have more. They have more of a collection that expands more some to uh, some of their other books like Vertigo and stuff like that. They have more of that in there. There's like so. There's nothing, I just anymore. I just do the ultra because my nearest comic shop's like forty minutes away. Yeah, yeah. Like I was gonna say, anything current I'm into, I'll just get the floppies. But yeah, I'm like, yeah. If you're reading current stuff, yeah, ultra is probably the way to go. All right. Uh, oh, the boys calm down on the fish jokes, uh, Justin. So, <laughs> <laughs> any final thoughts on, on twelve? <laughs> Uh, it's just a bonkers. I mean, the fact that he that he never once you thought to use his X-ray vision to look under that blanket, silly. And her whole rationale was silly too. As soon as she found out that he was from another planet, she should have been like, "Guess what? I'm a mermaid. We're both." Yeah, weird. I know. She's like, "Oh yeah, you you always belong in my world." Never look at my legs. Never look at my legs. Like, yeah, whatever. It's I feel like stupid. you put a deal with a mermaid. Huh? You're talking to an alien. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it, again, it's so weird because it's like after Crisis, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to like get rid of all this. So, you know, all the Silver Age stuff. He's the only mm -hmm. Kryptonian, no pets, no nothing. But me, mm -hmm. while we're working the, the uh, mermaid girlfriend back in the continuity. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, that's legitimate, but nothing else is. OK, yeah, sure. All right. Should we get to uh, Adventures of Superman 435? Yes. Which I uh, love that Ordway cover. Yeah. yeah, that's a great cover, isn't it? Man, yeah. this is the first time I read this one, actually. Yeah, I think I got this with some of those back issues not too long ago. All right, this is this one is another great synopsis. Oh, you got another short one for this? Okay. Uh huh. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, this one might have one more word. It might. This one might be eight words. All right, Adventures of Superman 435, also December 1987, The Circle Turns. Writers, Jerry Ordway and Marv Wolfman, penciler Jerry Ordway, inker John Beatty, colorist Anthony Tullin, letterer Albert the Guzman, and editor Mike Carlin. All right. Synopsis. The Circle, wait, The Circle realized they aren't looking for Superman. <laughs> Which is, uh, 
All right. So, yes, I mean, well, this one starts with uh, Clark and Kat doing a story at a racetrack and Clark kind of like. Yeah, I thought that was weird. The whole thing with the racetrack. I was like, well, yeah, when they're, when they're like, oh, Mr. Kat, you got to try this Formula One racer. <laughs> what are they doing putting him in there? Yeah, I know. So and then he gets attacked mentally by, um, oh, what's her face? The, uh, from the, the circle. Yeah. circle, yeah, I what her name is, yeah. So, so then Olivia crashes the Formula One race. They're like, "Oh my God, he's dead!" And he just like walks out of the wreckage. Yeah. Like, how did you survive? He's like, "Oh, I think I, I must have been thrown clear." Of course, yeah. I'm like, wouldn't you still be hurt if you were thrown from a Formula One racer? Yeah, mm -hmm. his glasses. His glasses were still on too. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> he was thrown clear, but his glasses were still on, and they weren't scratched a bit. Mm hmm. Oh, is that Zahara, uh, the one in the... Uh... Oh, maybe. Yeah, Zahara. That sounds about right. I yeah. think so, yeah. So he goes in his mind again, so he crashes the car. And then... Although, I think I think, I think they did this in the last issue of Adventures 2, where Kat's like, I don't know, I might have to leave, I might have to move to New York if I get custody of my son. And I'm like, is, mm. is, that, is that just like Wolfman giving the next writer like room? It's like, if you want to use Kat, you can. If you don't, if she has a right. golden excuse here's, that. Here's a way to Kat write her out if you want, want to. Yeah, yeah. That's possible. Mm, then... Or maybe then it was see, just uh... everybody was mad from when Kat you know, lied to Lois and made her, uh, you know, leave the apartment, throw her groceries away. Oh, yeah. That or, yeah, but I mean, Lois is this. Was, Lois was kind of catty with her, too. Yeah. They both had to go <laughs> back and forth for a while, didn't they? Uh -huh. Then we get a glimpse of concussion over at Strikers Island. I yep, love that. All. Uh, yep. Yeah. Good old concussion. <laughs> A freed by Charger, who is uh, part of part of the what is it, the uh, Fatal Five or whatever? Was he Charger? Yeah, because remember when they were like, "Oh, we have these two new members." Wasn't it Charger? And wasn't it? Uh, oh, yeah, and that's why he he blasts Mammoth. That's right. Yeah, because yes. Mammoth, like, you don't let me out, right? And he's like, "Yeah, no, <laughs> no, You're I'm going to repay my debt to you and zap you in the face." So yeah, you get a quick uh, appearance of uh, Mammoth, which I'm 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 sad this time because there's no mention of Pee Wee Herman this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh. Yeah. So Charger frees uh, concussion and leaving the prison, and so super no Superman's flying around. He's like, okay, I thought uh, you know first I thought this thing was a dream, but I've been attacked like twice now mentally at least, at least yeah. twice. This is too much of a coincidence. Yeah. yeah. So now the circle's meeting, and Zahara is basically like, uh, mm, you know, we're thought... talking about um, Prana's death. Yeah, from the, from the previous story. And they had decided that it was accidental, and they didn't blame Superman for it anymore. Yeah, it's pretty much, oh, we thought Superman was part of our circle, but he's not. Yeah, but we still need him, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> but they, but they, I guess they, in, in some of the, the, the mental thing, there was an image of uh, the building they're at, because... Uh, Yes. Superman arrives at 666 10th mm -hmm. Avenue, the Jurgens building. Jurgens building. Yeah, I love that. And then, then, then that's when he has his hallucination and sees oh, all the yeah. super pets. <laughs> yeah, getting attacked uh, Lois and Perry and everyone. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Crypto, streaky, Crypto, streaky, streaky yeah. comet. Yes, all of them. That's my favorite part of the issue. I love that. Mm, then he gets attacked by. <laughs> Lois, Lana, and Kat dressed as Wonder Woman. Yeah, that part was funny. I got a good kick out of that one. And then she shifts into Wonder Woman who starts throwing him around. I don't want you, Superman. Hell, I don't even need you. You're not special. <laughs> You're not special. Lots of, lots of women. This week is women issues. You see? <laughs> <laughs> A brief like, glimpse of the the newsboy legion. Boo! I'm like, <laughs> did they make an appearance yet? <laughs> I mean, I, I know they were probably 
pre-crisis, but I'm like, have they made up cra- uh, post? Because he mm. recognizes them. He says Newsboy Legion. I'm like, hey. yeah, he knows who they are. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, oh, and then he gets attacked by um, some big green creature. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice big full page who, one. I wonder there. who that's yeah. supposed to be. <laughs> well, it. Well, after I I started looking at this some more, I remember remember there's a few issues later on. It's another Jerry Ordway one where he fights like a kryptonite man mm-hmm. that looks kind of like him, almost like a clone of Superman. Oh yeah, yeah. Kryptonite. It this dude that he's fighting almost kind of looks like that. Almost bit. looks like that. I wasn't sure if they were uh, homaging, you know, the strongest uh, Marvel character there is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who might that? I, be, at first, you know? yeah. At first, that was my thought, but. I don't know, I don't know who that is. I if you want to learn who that is, I uh, go check out Gamma Charge. Again. Gamma Charge. Yes. Gamma Charge might help you figure that out. That's I mean, right. I hear it's the strongest podcast there is. I don't That's know. Right. Ron Lil tells me that this the strongest Marvel podcast there is. Oh uh, well, she and she and Russell have a debate going about that. I'll let them have That's that. That's the debate we need to go down. Yeah, who's who's yeah, Paul versus yeah. Superman. Although Superman did beat him uh, mullet and all in uh that Marvel vs DC back in uh the nineties. Hmm. Which, Which is getting reprinted, re- reprinted in the omnibus. I'm so happy about that. Yeah, Tyler, did you see that? They're going to be yes. putting out the omnibus of yeah, all the more. I used to have. Yeah. I ha- I don't even remember which one it was, but I had one of those. I think it was a trade of it, and yeah, I uh, it's going to be re- the mini series printing a lot of their stories. It, it'd be nice to have a reprint of the Superman meets Spider Man. Just to I have think that's going to be in there. It's going to be in yeah. there because they're reprinting a bunch of those one shots yeah. too. Yeah. So I'm a, uh, I mean, why not? I wonder if they'll bring back their amalgam characters. Yeah, that's in another omnibus. Maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah. They should. I'm. Both companies can use use the money. Yeah, huh? yeah. I would love to see them continue some of those. Oh yeah, super. What was it? Super Soldier, Superman, and Captain America. Super Soldier. Yeah. What was the one that was Batman, like Wolverine? Dark Claw. Dark yeah. Claw. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Ray loved that. They 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 separated. Bat- there was Batman and Wolverine and as you know, Dark Claw, and then there was Bruce Wayne, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., yeah. <laughs> I, of course, loved Doctor Strange Fate, and uh, I loved uh, Amazon, which was yes. Wonder Woman and Storm. Yeah. Speed Demon. Uh, Flash, Speed Demon was good Flash, too. Ghost yeah. Rider. yeah, yeah. I think those were my three favorites. Oh, one who show in that Bruce Wayne Age of Shield for two seconds we get uh, with a K Nightwing, which was Moon Knight and Nightwing. Mm, yes, <laughs> for like yeah, two seconds. Yeah. All right. Uh, so. So yeah, he has a fight with this green dude who all of a sudden has Jimmy's face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of course he does. Yeah, and then st- things start getting him even more trippy. Yeah, and then these- and then we start to get the point at this point in the issue that uh oh, we gotta wrap this up quick. Um what do we do? <laughs> yeah, because the horror is basically like, yeah, we we you we know you're not one of us, but we need your help to uh yeah. get back to our own dimension or whatever, and he uh, he's like, I would have helped if you would have asked just to ask me in the first place. Yeah, you didn't have to attack me, yeah, you bunch of chodes. You could have just asked me. I mean, I'm the most powerful dude on the planet. If anybody could have found a way to help you, I could have done it. You didn't have to attack me. Right now. He's like, I could pay back in kind, but he's like, oh, yeah, he's like, I'll be enough to be rid of you. So she's like, here, take my hand. And all of a sudden, they, they'd all just disappear. That's it. He's They're like, gone. That's it? They're gone? I'm back on Earth. Bil- building's gone. Yeah. So basically, all I had to do was hold her hand for a couple seconds, and that was it. Yeah, it was that easy. Yep. But they, but they did say something about a lost uh, member. Uh, he's like, uh, I still don't know what happened to that lost one. Oh well, if he shows up someday, maybe I'll be able to help him get to where his fellow travelers are. If I ever figure out where that is, <laughs> and how it happened in the first place. Yeah. So. Oh my word. Yeah. So I would assume, yes, that was, uh, yes, that was uh, Marv Wolfman wrapping up his his run. Mm. Well, well, yeah, because the Millennium issue, next issue, we had Sam Byrne Ordway, yeah. So, yes, yeah, it's all Millennium next time, yeah, oh. yeah, uh, yeah. It's weird. This issue was weird, man. Yeah. I, I, 
again, most of it mostly just tying up that that dangling plot point Marv Wolfman. Yeah. Had. I would almost have rather that they left it open though, because this resolution is just so yeah. half assed that it just it doesn't make make sense in the grander scheme of any of it. I mean, unless he was just worried that no one was going to pick it up, and then, you know, everyone was going to be like, well, "What happened to that thing five years ago?" That mm, no one ever wrapped well, up. Maybe. Well, I don't know. Oh, they, they like, could have wrapped it up in an annual or something. I don't know. Like that one in Dunville. What was that? Stratos. Uh... <laughs> oh, <laughs> Stratos. Because no one ever wrapped that thing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, should we get to the last issue? Yes, Action Comics. Action 595, that's right. One of my favorites. First appearance, yes. Uh, that's Fact, right. Action Comics 595, December 1987. The Ghost of Superman. <laughs> Writer and penciler John Byrne, inker Keith Williams, colorist Tom Zayuko, letterer John Costanza. Costanza. <laughs> Editor Mike Carlin. It's so funny you just did that. Like I just today started rewatching Seinfeld from the beginning. I was like, I'm just gonna start watching this. I need a good humorous fl- throwback show. And oh yeah, that's where I'm at. Oh, I get. There's so many shows I'll watch them through uh, all the way through a few times, and I'm like, oh, I need to put this on break. I I can watch Seinfeld over and over and over. Yeah, Especially like, like the, the, the later up the, the seasons. Yeah. yeah. It's just one of those shows I'm like, I've seen a lot of, but I've never sat and like seen it through. So, yeah. Nice. A lot of, a lot of episodes about nothing. <laughs> All right. Uh, and you said you do have a synopsis for this one. Yes. Yes. It's just or- called Silver Banshee. <laughs> <laughs> a black and white clad woman with a skull painted face calling herself the Silver Banshee terrorizes Metropolis by rampaging through bookstores looking for a certain book while killing whoever she touches. When Superman confronts her, he discovers, though seemingly a bit too late, that it's not her touch that kills, but rather her voice. As Metropolis mourns for the loss of Superman as he lies lifeless in his coffin, his ghost seemingly emerges to carry on the fight. As Silver Banshee plows through another bookstore in order to find the book, she confronts Superman's ghost, who is unaffected by her killing voice, nor by her deadly scream. As she vanishes, Superman appears alive, revealing that the Silver Banshee's voice had only rendered him unconscious and that his ghost was really the Martian Manhunter, who who both discover that the Silver Banshee's power has no effect over someone whose identity is masked. And Superman will use that later. (laughs) And another issue. Yeah. He remembers that. Yeah, this one. So you said you loved her her first appearance, uh, Justin. Uh, so what do you think? Oh yeah, this is one of my favorites. I remember when this came out, I got this off one of the spinner racks and just loved it. Especially that cover. I was like, oh man, this is awesome. And when the actual death of Superman happened, I remembered this issue. I was like, well, I was there when it happened in 87 when <laughs> Silver Banshee did it the first time when Doomsday got crap on Silver Banshee. Like, yeah, I, I love this issue. I love the fact that we have another magical, mystical powered nemesis mm-hmm. for Superman because we know that's one of his weaknesses. And I just enjoy the Silver Banshee. I think it's yeah, an underrated it's just, character. Yeah, definitely. It's cool to see a, another a new nemesis for, for Superman at this point in, in, in time where they were kind of throwing a lot of new villains out there and seeing which one stuck. And I'm glad that this was one of the ones that did. And it's so, it's so weird too, because it's like, you know, Maggie Sawyer and the, uh, you know, the uh, MCU show up to thought, try to stop her. Superman doesn't even show up until the last panel of page eight. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then of course, Ray's favorite character makes an appearance. Oh yeah. Oh, yes. Yep. See, Ray, everyone loves that drop. I don't care who I podcast with. Everyone mm-hmm. mentions that drop. Batman, yeah. my favorite character. <laughs> I actually quoted it the other day talking with the kids. I love Batman. <laughs> I love the, the page, too, when Lex is freaking out. No, it should have been me. It was supposed to be me. Ah, he's destroying everything in his, in his office. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but, oh, we, oh, we get the Pee Wee Herman quote here. Well, yeah, for me, I, I know. Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> That's my name to wear it out. 
This is just another one of those comics, this issue, that I'm like, this could have been a really cool Superman the Animated Series episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That we talked yeah. about a couple of them before. They just I feel like there's something about it that I think could translate really well into a one-off episode. Definitely. And I'm it's been nine years since I've watched Superman the Animated Series all the way through because I've kind of been holding back. Um but I don't think Silver Banshee ever made an appearance. I don't think she did either. Do you remember Phil? Did she? I don't think she did. I don't think she's ever she really made an appearance in animation. Like I know she's been in like some of the direct uh like the public enemies movie. Um, but she's like in the background. Like never oh. any... Yeah, like live action they did like Supergirl. Was she was on Supergirl? Yeah, Supergirl. she was in Supergirl, right? Yeah. And she was in um uh Smallville. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. I thought I could have sworn that she was in some animated thing. She's in, like I said, she's in the back, right? Um, she is in Justice League Unlimited. In the series oh, maybe. maybe that's what it was thinking of. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. I love she has a skull face and she has skull face earrings too. Yes, I just think I just think you could like we reviewed um, a Silver Banshee we talked about last time on Krypton Report uh, book. I just think I don't know. It's a character you could do a really cool Superman. You could have even like taken this comic, set it at Halloween just to have fun, mm-hmm. and had Silver Definitely. Banshee. So then you get a Halloween special and a introduction to Silver Banshee out of an animated series. Yeah, that would have been cool. And then of course, most recently they did have a new style of Silver Banshee in My Adventures with Superman. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. And then in, in film, it says that she's in Superman, Batman, Public Enemies, Batman, Unlimited, Monster Mayhem, the Lego Batman movie, um, Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay. Um, oh, hmm. very small part in that. But yeah, it just I feel like she's underserved, but has a really iconic look and style to her. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Very unique, too. I mean, you don't really see a lot of characters with this kind of power set in the DC sphere. That is so funny, her and Superman's ghost, and then uh, after she like, looks like she blows herself up, it's like, oh no, that's the one. Superman <laughs> shows up, Jimmy's like, wait a minute, there's your Superman and your ghost. She's like, no, that's the Martian Manor. Surprise! <sighs> yeah, that was, I like that part a lot. Yeah, the like part that. where she where she freaks out at the end and just starts screaming louder and louder until everything explodes. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But again, on that, I've, last- had day- I've had days like that. When they ask you to do overtime, I'm kind of the same. Exactly, yeah. Uh, But that last page with all its dialogue, they're basically like, "Hmm, where did the silver banshee come from? I don't know." So I don't know. Come in here. She does return, actually. Very, actually, not too, not too um, shortly after this, right? I think, I think it's over in Superman that she appears next. Yeah, there's one. Yeah, yeah. And then there's an appearance that even after that, too. So, yeah, yeah. There's at least two more appearances coming here. There's another John Byrne issue. And I think there was, after that, was the Mike McNoll issue. And then in one of the current, like, not too recent, one of the books from not too recent past, Tyler, wasn't, I mean, uh, was it um the regular Superman book uh, by uh, Joshua Williamson? Wasn't Jimmy Dayton Silver? Yeah. Book? They bring Jimmy they bring, was dating her. Yeah, she's like, and this is one of those things that uh, I get tired of because you're having all these stories where like, oh, this here, this villain actually is turning over a new leaf and, yeah, uh-huh. and is uh, bettering herself and becoming a good person, which I'm like, okay, but you're not leaving us any villains to fight. Yeah, that's, um, what, right. that, that's my thing. I'm like, you know what? I'm not saying never do it, but I mean, not every villain has to be, oh, they're just misunderstood. I mean, sometimes... A, a hole is just an a hole. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like we're trying to redeem Lex here again. I mean, they've done that before too, where they try mm-hmm. to make mm-hmm. Lex more heroic or an anti-hero. I'm just like, I, I see what you're doing, and because what was that? Was that Rebirth or like uh, a few years ago, Tyler, when uh, they were doing Lex, he was wearing the 
Superman armor. They, you know, yeah. They, I mean, that was in the Rebirth era, and then uh, and I'm like, they're know, just trying to make him Tony Stark in of DC. That's what they're doing. Oh, and then they right. tried yeah. to make you know over that same time in action comics, um, or not action, sorry, detective Clayface. You know, was trying to turn. Oh over yeah. Guy. Oh yeah. Th- I remember that. Yeah. It just, it just, you know, it works for some characters. You can have a redemption arc or whatever. Then it's like, okay. You just start doing all of them. You're like you're you're chipping away at having actual villains. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I um, think because they're looking for the next Harley Quinn. No, oh, yeah, yeah. That's that's, probably, that's the whole yeah. thing. Where they get too popular, and then they're like, oh, well, we want to merchandise them and give them their own book, and uh, mm-hmm. that's an anti-hero. Yeah, it's just yeah. So I was afraid they keep trying to. I'm afraid they're going to try to do that with the Joker. I'm like, no, 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 no. There's just some characters that don't have redemption or anything in them, and the Joker is one of them. Yeah, that's like Loaf and I were talking about in the current Batman book. They're kind of doing like the Joker, like year one, and it's where it's like, no, 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 no. We don't the need brave- all, this, all this detail because because the one point is like there's a guy who trained Batman who's like training the Joker to you know to be the Joker, and we're just like. Yeah, no. nothing says chaos like being trained to be chaos. Well, what I don't understand is why they don't do more Elseworld stuff. Like some of the some of the Elseworld stuff over the years has taken on legs of its own, and like Red Sun and all the other stuff that they've mm-hmm. branched off of other things. And the Elseworld, why don't, they, why don't they do more Elseworld stuff, and and they could have the Joker be a superhero like they want to do, and have it be an Elseworlds thing, and they could make a whole mini series. They could do an ongoing about it, and. It wouldn't interrupt any of the other right. stuff that's going on already, I mean, and it w- would make a little bit more sense in the grander scheme of things. I mean, that whole Batman White Knight thing, that was kind of the Joker being... Mm. Not cool. Which was cool. Like, that was a separate story, and it was cool. And then they milked the hell out of that, and they're just like, here's another miniseries. Here's a one shot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think they should do more Elseworld stuff, and that way they can explore these concepts, and have them even go further if they if they take off if they're successful then they can keep doing them but that way it will make it make a little bit more sense to the, when they start playing with characters like that but something seems popular seems popular and then they just milk the hell out of it <clears throat> anyone yeah. remember the batman who laughs <laughs>, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah all right um uh, all right any other thoughts on this one or any of the other one okay uh all right, Tyler, I know you didn't read uh, all of them. Justin, how would you rank these in order? Silver Banshee goes first. Silver Banshee first. I do, I do that. Sure. I, I, That's I, the one I got yeah, through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I... The issue with the circle, the adventures of Superman one was tough because it didn't make a whole lot of sense. And you could tell that they were trying to wrap up that plot really quickly. Very rushing, yeah. 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 I feel like if that had been done in an annual or something where they where Marv could have like really ex- put some extra time into the plot and, and fleshed it out further and given it a more satisfying ending, it would have been a lot better than this. I mean, what they gave us, I mean, you take out that race car thing, I mean, they almost could have did that story in a backup in an annual. <laughs> right, exactly. Or yeah. the main issue. <laughs> yeah, and just the resolution where he just had to hold her hands. It's like, oh, yikes. Yeah, it's like, why are you attacking him if all you need is him the whole drive? <laughs> yeah, that would have taken all of five minutes to arrange, especially yeah. for somebody with telepathic talents like that. Like, uh, I don't. Yeah, so I think that was probably the last one, and then the the, the Superman issue with Lori is slightly above that, which yeah, that's also idea. still it's like. <laughs> I don't understand the point of it. I don't. I don't get it. But now again, we're introducing Lori to you know supposedly kill her, although she will be back, kids. Yeah, but again, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Burn has Burn has some fetishes. That's all. Well, no, well, yeah, I get it. It's Superman's <laughs> fucking Lori. <war>, yeah, <laughs> it's the LL thing. That's his fetish. Oh yeah. Anybody with the LL thing in the name is like. Well, that's what I think. That's oh, his real yeah. kryptonite. Oh, I think that was Charlie's old theory, and Lil ran with it. It's where it's like you know that double L sound is like, uh, you know, it's like a mating call for Krypton. <laughs> <laughs> Subconscious mating call. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, why do you think he's always worried about Lex? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's an interesting artistic choice. 
<laughs> I'll do explain it. Lois Lane, Lana Lang, Lori Lamar. <laughs> Uh, it's although a valid I, concept. Although I think that's the Stan, that's the whole Stan Lee thing, where he just you know he yeah uh, named all his all his characters had the same initials, you know, yeah. so you remember Peter Parker, Matt Murdock, yeah, yeah, yep. It's the alliteration. Mm-hmm. Just Excelsior. <laughs> <laughs> and I think in names too, there in general there were a lot more of that back in the day, back in the fifties oh, and sixties, yeah. than there are now, yeah. All right. Anything else, gentlemen? No, no. I, just, I think I we covered it. Yeah, I popped in to say hey. On to Millennium. Oh yes. <laughs> oh boy. Next episode, kids. Yes, we're going to cover the Millennium. If I have time, I'm going to try to read the Millennium actual miniseries, but we'll just cover the crossovers here. So yeah. I'm going to try to get myself some background. But yes, next time we'll cover Superman 13 and 14. Adventures of Superman 436 and 437 and Action Comics 596. All right. Which I believe I saw the Spectre on the cover. Yes. I'm excited about that. All right. So, yes, kids, send us your thoughts on those. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find all things Capes Lunatics, episodes, social media, merchandise. Uh, please pick up some merch. Uh, and again, if you do Lil's favor, just rain ran the money on us. Use that Cash App link. Mm. Make it rain. And yes. of course, the Patreon. Because again, Lil and I just planning crazier and crazier stuff over there. I promised you mm-hmm. 24 that the uh, Patreon <coughs> Hellfire would be more vicious and brutal than ever. So find it all at uh, tubespace. Io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. Tubespace. Io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. I love it. <laughs> all right, uh, Mr. Tyler Patrick. Uh, you can hear him talking Superman here and where else? Uh, On the Krypton Report, all the time. That's all we do. Talk Superman in DC. Sometimes Supergirl. Well, well, well yep. I this show was on. It was a big topic. But... Yeah, it was. All right. Oh, did you see that, Tyler? I was telling Justin. I, I saw something. I don't know if it's true, but they're supposedly they were saying they're can't Superman and Lois. The next season is going to be the last one because they didn't want it to compete with Superman Legacy. And that's coming out now. I'm I'm kind of like okay. I'm like that's sad if it's true. I'm like you're I mean, with your big budget movie competing with the CW budget show. I mean. I, I always had a fear. Of, I was Superman and Lois, but I'm just like you're worried about your big budget thing. My thought was I always figured it would last for like uh, five seasons, and uh, uh, you know it would end before Superman Legacy because I didn't really see yeah. like Superman and Lois going for too long because I felt like the show had integrity and like they had a good story to tell and they didn't want to drag it out to be like the other shows where eventually it just got to be trash and redundant um but that makes me okay so if that's their thought okay it makes me retroactively ask was them allowing superman to be in supergirl season two a reaction to the bad press of the character from bvs because 2016 is when we had both bvs and then he appeared on supergirl for two technically like what three episodes the first two and then like the last one but had a cameo in the in the second to last episode of the season yeah something like that yeah um so it makes me wonder but okay uh so i don't i don't know like i mean you can argue like why are you diluting your product but at the same time like having two different versions of the character at two different times um is one thing you know like I mean, you're going to, you know, you're already going to have two different Batman properties. So whatever. I mean, in, in one way, I'm, I'm okay with it because it, it just kind of brings the character back down because we've had such a huge influx <coughs> of everything from Marvel and DC over the past few years. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I really like Superman and Lois, but I just want the... um. You know, I want the quality to stay high, but at the same time, if it didn't get moved to like a streamer or something, like we see what the current CW 
has be has is becoming like no DC left. That's it, Superman alone. But I mean, like, there's not even really a CW left. No, that's what I was, that's what I told Lil. My local st- uh, station that was carrying CW, they're dropping it. They're, so like whatever Next Star is doing, like with all their like a reality programming and reruns, yeah. like this 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 the the show would have been canceled and ended probably anyways. Yes, because I'm gonna have to watch it on uh, Max or whatever. Probably next I'm day. just gonna I'm gonna do like yeah. I do every year. I buy it digitally. Mm-hmm. And then watch it like that to support the show and have the show that I want. Oh, yeah. You know, so I mean, it would have gotten probably canceled or lost just because of the network's gone to nothing now. Like it used to be a really great network and now it's nothing. Well, at least they didn't end it on that cliffhanger. Oh, that, yeah, exactly. Like yeah, I would have been uh, outraged. I would have been like, uh, give us something. Exactly. Just like a, like a, give us like a one, like a one hour special. <laughs> You know, or a two-hour made-for-TV movie to wrap it up. Exactly. All right, Mr. Justin the Owl, it's your time to shine. Uh, <laughs> find you here every every twice a month uh, on Electric Mullet. Uh, I can hear him every week on either Marvel Tales or X Men Classic with me talking something Marvel. Uh, you can hear him once a month with me and Russell on uh, We Are the Night, the Batman the podcast. Batman podcast. Talking Asriel or uh, Energon Universe, talking all the new Transformers and G.I. Joe content coming out of Image. And of course, the king of podcasting does way more than that. So, Justin, what else are you doing? Yes. You can also find me on the aforementioned Gamma Charge, the strongest podcast there is with Russell, where we talk about the Hulk and She Hulk three okay. times a month. Also, uh, Predator and Prey. The Yocha podcast, P Ray, P Ray, right jo- joined by the High Priest of Kanshu Ray, and we talk about Fox's Predator in comic books. And Gone the Form of Man, the Etrigan podcast, we're still going strong on that. A new episode just came out. We're covering Jack Kirby's classic Demon series, nice. and the Lost Library of Legends is coming out with a new episode very soon as well. So keep your ears open for that one. What topic? <laughs> You'll have to tune in and find out. I bet I, I bet I have a somewhat of an idea. Well, yes. The 90s here, bitch. <laughs> you would be right. You weren't giving me any year. I was like, I have to drop ready. Come on. <laughs> uh, come on, I got to drop ready. Give me what I need. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, it's me, your old pal, the owl. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us, kids. Oh, hey, I just, just, I just noticed. Morning. I think uh, I think Streaky's behind uh, Tyler there. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Oh my cat, which one? Oh, they're, oh, they're both in here. Yep. Nice. One's right. One's right here, and the other one's oh, on my. She, lo- she loves being curled up on my short boxes. Oh, I love that. She's got a little <laughs> a little perch up there. Protected. Uh, Sleeping with his, his dozens of supermen on the all over the wallet. Mm-hmm. All right, kids, come back next time. Remember to join us for truth, justice, and the mullet way. Watch out for that bad caviar. I was going to say, I'm going to get me some fish sticks. Get <laughs> <laughs>